call the Honourable Member for McKellar. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. If ever there was a speech that demonstrated the need for this bill, who was the member for Scullins? Contest of ideas. Who is he kidding? This is about money. This is about the Labor Party funnelling more money into their campaigns at the cost of Australian democracy. And it is about their obscene efforts to ensure that Australians don't know what they've been up to for all these years. They talk about the concern about unions being involved in campaigns. Well, let me tell you, Deputy Speaker, have they ever once, a single time, if they can point to it, I'll be happy to, to apologise, a single time that a single union, a single union official, a single union leader has ever asked their members what they want and where they want their money spent. Because, as I recall at the last election, active union members voted for the coalition 52 per cent to 47 per cent. But I bet not a single union gave a single dollar to the Liberal Party or the National Party or any party that represented the members they claimed to represent. Because they know they know that if there was real democracy in the union movement, if there was real democracy in any of these groups, if Australians knew what those over there want to hide, which is how their money is getting spent, they would be appalled and disgusted. And that's what this bill will achieve. This bill will finally turn the rock on all the cockroaches lurking in the dark of Australian democracy. The member for Scullin, and I encourage him, I encourage every single member on the other side to keep doing this from now until whenever the election is. Keep telling ordinary men, men and women of Australia, working men and women of Australia, that they're extremists because they don't believe that the Premier of Victoria should be able to put people under house arrest without any capacity of appeal. Don't tell ordinary Australians that, they should, that every time that they have some concern of overreach by an Australian government anywhere, of any party, that they're neo-Nazis. Go and tell ordinary Australians that they're misogynist, that they're sexist, that they're homophobia because they've committed the great crime of disagreeing with you. I encourage those opposite to keep this up. I notice those opposite, by the way, were so concerned about threats of violence at, um, at protests in Melbourne, um, but didn't seem so concerned when people wearing T-shirts emblazoned with the, with the letters CFMEU on it were at committing actual violence against law enforcement officers. I don't remember anyone on that side standing up and calling them extremists or bemoaning their violence. I don't remember the member for Chifley going on the ABC and saying the violence perpetrated by union members against police officers in Victoria has to stop. No, no, that never happened, Deputy Speaker. The rank hypocrisy of those opposite knows no bounds. And this bill is about actually simply saying to Australians, this is how those who claim to be charities are actually spending the money you give to them. This is how those receiving foreign donation from foreign actors who may or may not have Australia's best interests in mind are actually perpetrating these things. They get very upset. They get very upset when Clive Palmer spends his own money. They get very upset when Clive Palmer spends his own money, but they only get upset with us when we say to some of these uh, charities, well, hang on, if you think this is the best way to spend the hard-earned money of, work, of the working men and women of Australia that gave you their money in good faith and for you to declare it, then you... then No, no, they're opposed to that. They want continuous disclosure. Continuous disclosure, I might add, Deputy Speaker, is one of the best ways, one of the best ways known to hide donations. Because instead of giving $100,000 that gets reported each quarter or each half, you give $1,000 you give for 100 days and no one sees what you're up to. No wonder the Labor Party wants to bring that in. No wonder, no wonder, no wonder the Labor Party wants to stop litigation funders from, being, from ripping off plaintiffs 
from ripping off victims I would have nothing to do with the fact that Morris Blackburn gives them $100,000 every year. In fact, it would have nothing to do with the fact... I mean, those opposite... I've got to tell you, Deputy Speaker, I'm getting angrier the more I think about this. Those opposite have the absolute temerity and gall to lecture anyone about democracy and transparency and honesty in democracy. These are the people... Those opposite who took a $100,000 donation from Morris Blackburn the same day that the Victorian Attorney-General announced that she would allow them to take contingency fees in Victoria. They have the gall to come in here and talk to anyone about transparency and honesty in Australian democracy on the very same day that a law firm gives them $100,000. A law firm, by the way, that has a litigation funder housed in Singapore, incorporated in Ireland with a trust fund in the Netherlands. Oh, no, that's not about tax. That's not about tax avoidance. No, no, no. That's, that's a normal way that you set up a company in Australia. All those small businesses, all those working men and women of Australia who they claimed, who they used to represent, who they used to represent. That's how they've set up all their small businesses. You know, domiciled in Singapore, incorporated in Ireland with a trust structure in, in, um, with a trust structure in the Netherlands and an accountant based out of London. That's how everyone does it in Australia, Deputy Speaker. No, only your donors do. Only your donors do that. Your donors do it, especially after they get a decision from the Victorian government um, that benefits them to the tune of God knows how much, but probably millions and millions of dollars. And you don't want that declared. But you'd rather talk to us about real-time disclosures, which is a way of hiding how much money people is giving, are giving. So keep calling men and working, the men and women of Australia who work for a living, keep calling them extremists. Keep calling them neo-Nazis. Keep telling them that they're homophobes because they've committed the great crime of disagreeing with you. I encourage you to keep doing that. And keep telling us how the ACNC is actually headed up by, by, um, by you know, one of these extremists, a guy by the name of Gary Johns, and ignore the fact that he used to be a Labor member of this chamber. Ignore that fact. Ignore, the fa ignore all the inconvenient facts you want. But Australians are on to you guys. I mean, the fact of the matter is you'll support litigation funders, you'll support, you'll support charities who, don't want, who are taking donations from foreign governments and foreign agents and, for, and foreigners who don't have Australia's best interests at heart, who then turn around and use that money for political purposes. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's keep defending them. Let's stop, let's stop exposing that, those people to transparency. I mean, this bill... I mean, we have at the moment, Deputy Speaker, we have at the moment all these front groups, all these front groups starting up, who say that they're about transparency and honesty, have raised millions of dollars. They won't tell us who from. They won't tell us who from. Who are, who are basically, who basically are being run by a group of people who had the benefit of being born to wealthy parents. And now they want to buy this parliament. They're openly saying it. They're openly saying that we want to put more people on the crossbench using millions of dollars of undeclared money, which at the end of the day, they will then use to arbitrage and leverage decisions that benefit them and their business decisions. And those opposite do not want to expose them to the hard light of day, do not want to make them actually just front up and tell us, where did you get your money from? And then they make a big deal about the fact that we're doing this in the shadow of an election. Oh, OK, so when should we do it? On the other side of an election? So all your mates can get away with, once again, funnelling hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars, into campaigns to influence the outcome of this parliament, to divert public funds to ventures that benefit them? Because they don't benefit their members. We know that. The Fair Work, since the Fair Work Act got, got um, passed in this chamber, uh, Deputy Speaker, real wages have pretty much stagnated. They want to blame everyone else except their piece of legislation. But we know it 
and the, and the men and women of, of Australia who work for a living, they know it too. They're on to you guys. They know that you represent organised capital, not organised labour. So whether it's Climate 200, whether it's the voices of um, uh, the voices against Liberal Party members, whether it's the rising something movement that looks more like a souffle than anything rising, whether it's the Open Foundation that essentially, and, and I love how the member for Scullin, he's done it again. Those opposite do this all the time. We're going to move a second reading amendment speech. Now, I wonder what the purpose of that was, Deputy Speaker. Could it be that the purpose of it was to force those on this side to vote against what will be a nonsensical amendment so that the theyvoteforus.org.au, run by this Open Foundations organisation, which, which once again has ta tax deductibility status that, that isn't audited by the Australian Charities and Not-for-Profits Commission, could it be that that then allows them to go on and say, oh, you know, the member for Bass, she voted strongly against um, disclosure laws. But she didn't. She didn't. She actually voted for comprehensive transparency laws in our democracy. That's what the member for Bass did. Those opposite, those opposite are the ones trying to hide the donations of their mates. Those opposite are the ones who don't want to see the actual Australians know what, what they, them and their mates are up to. They don't want their, their friends, they don't want Australians to see what the Voices of movement's up to. They don't want their friend. They don't want Australians to see what their friends in the Climate 200 group, or this new Integrity Foundation, or the Open Foundation, or they vote for us, or the Rising movement, or the Voices of movement, who, are, who apparently are just community groups. They or or all the independents who sit on the crossbench, who don't have to declare where they got money from until after the next election. That's what they want. That's what they want. But they vote for us.org. And I say, to, I say to those few Australians listening to this, do not believe what they have to say. If you want to know who, who voted here and on what they really voted for, go to Hansard. Because it's not a left-wing front group trying to pretend to be a community organisation. It's, Hansard is an Australian government uh, publication. And you will see exactly what your representative voted for and why they didn't vote or what, or what they did vote for. This They Vote For Us group, they're, they're a left-wing front group. They've got tax deductibility. And those opposite don't want them to have to disclose where they get their money from because they want them to continue to campaign in the shadows, in the darkness, where no one can see them, where no one knows what they're up to, where no one knows really who they're, who's backing them. That's what they really want. And, you know, we have in front of us, we have in front of us, um, and we do, and by the way, Deputy Speaker, we know exactly what they're up to. They just want, they want it because they're open about it. They say, they say to their friends at the ABC and Channel 9 newspapers, they say, you know, we want to get more people on the crossbench so we can, we can have... We can have leverage over the government, whoever's in government. We can have leverage and we can make them do what we want them to do. So they want to change Australia to look more like them but not what the majority of Australians want. They want to... They see Australian democracy. They see this parliament as an arbitrage opportunity. And those opposite, I, I don't know what they think they're doing because they're making this possible. They're enabling it. It's bad for Australia. It's bad for this parliament. It's bad for Australian democracy. And so instead of moving clever second reading amendments that make it look like people who are actually voting for honest government, for transparent government, for more disclosure, are in fact voting against it, because that's what, that's what they vote for us.org will do. That's what they'll do. And then they're, they're, who knows where they got their money from? But we do know this, they're part of all these coordinated front groups. So just today, we have another new group, Integrity Something. You know, it's in the name. Whatever's in the name, it'll be the opposite of. And they admit, oh, we've been working very closely with Climate 200. Very closely with Climate 200. So in short, this bill is about exposing. 
this highly coordinated group of left-wing front groups that are, that are disseminating misinformation throughout our democracy Order. and that see this parliament as an arbitrage opportunity and not about democracy. Order the question.